I woke up to the sound of knocking on my door. Rolling over and grabbing my phone, I checked the time to discover it was 4 a.m. Who the hell would be up at this hour? I had already dealt with one trespasser. Could it be someone else? Another knock echoed through the house, causing me to sit up. I was tired. It had been a long night and I didn't feel like checking the door. But I knew I wouldn't get any sleep until I investigated who or what was outside. Getting out of bed, my back hurt like hell. Carrying around all that extra weight really does a number on the lower spine. I put on my slippers to protect my feet from the broken glass. It needed to be cleaned up, just hadn't gotten around to it just yet. The dark hallway was difficult to navigate, but I eventually found the front door. Peeking through the window, I checked outside to see if anyone was there. The street light was barely bright enough to illuminate the front porch, but I couldn't see anyone at the door. My psychiatrist did say I had the propensity for auditory hallucinations. Maybe that was it. I closed the blinds and made my way back to the bedroom. Before I could even think about laying down, I heard the knock again, this time even louder. Grabbing the hammer off the floor, I ran to the front door. I got you this time, you little shit. Flinging it open, I prepared to confront whatever had decided to play this stupid prank on me. But the porch was empty. I was the only person standing outside, holding the hammer uncomfortably high above my head. Good God, I'm doing it again, acting like a complete psycho. I went back inside and locked the door, dropping the hammer on the ground. I gave a slight chuckle. This is the kind of thing that's going to get me locked up in the funny farm again. I needed to start playing it cool. I had a new life and things were going to be different. Dare I say, things are going to be even better. This was my opportunity to have the life that I always wanted. Going back into the bedroom, I sat down on the bed and tried to relax my tired mind. I wanted to find that elusive sleep again. That was all I ever really wanted was some rest. The knock echoed again through the house. I was certain that was not an auditory hallucination. Then it finally dawned on me. The knock was coming from the floor. I heard the faint sound of someone sobbing just below my feet. How was that possible? I had stabbed him at least a dozen times before putting the previous homeowner inside the floorboards. I guess he hadn't actually bled out after all. Stomping on the ground, I shouted, I told you, this is my house now. I deserve it more than you. Selfish jerk. I spent the last ten years sleeping on that thin mattress in a single room. It was my time to enjoy a big house and a big bed. The incessant rain hammered against the window panes of Emily's small apartment, casting an eerie shadow in the dimly lit room. It had been six months since her best friend, Tammy, had tragically died in a car accident. Emily was still grappling with the grief and guilt that had consumed her since that fateful night. She grabbed the bottle of Oxy off the table and popped another pill into her mouth. She had been warned not to abuse them. The doctor said she needed to start physical therapy for her back pain and stop depending on these to help her. But they treated more than her pain. If you take enough at once, they help you forget. If she hadn't been drinking that night, if she could have known that she was too intoxicated to drive, then Tammy would still be here with her. As Emily settled onto her couch, waiting for the pain pills to kick in, her phone chimed, causing her to jump up. Emily could have sworn that she had put it on silent for the night. She glanced at the screen and her heart skipped a beat when she saw the sender's name. Tay-Tay. It was the nickname she had given Tammy. How was this possible? Was someone just playing some kind of cruel trick? Her fingers began to tremble as she opened the message. I miss you so much. Tears welled up in her eyes as she stared at the message. Could it be real? She hesitated for a moment before typing a response. I don't know who this is, but it isn't funny. Almost instantly, another message arrived. There can be no fun without the E. 
It was the last throwaway dumb joke Tammy had said before they got into the car that night. Tammy would often refer to her as E, and use her nickname to come up with corny one-liners like that. It wasn't a detail she had shared with anyone. She knew it was impossible, but she wanted to believe it was her. Tammy, is that really you? Yes, it's me. I need to see you again. Can we meet where it happened? Emily's heart raced, her emotions in turmoil. She knew exactly where Tammy meant, the spot where the accident had occurred, the place that had haunted her nightmares for months. As she left her apartment and ventured into the relentless rain, Emily couldn't shake the feeling that she was walking into the unknown, into a situation that made little sense. She jumped into her car and took off down the road. The streets were empty and desolate. Everyone with any sense was asleep at this hour of the night. The familiar spot appeared before her, a dark, quiet stretch of road. The rain fell harder now, the relentless downpour obscuring her vision. She reached for her phone on the car seat and sent a quick message with one hand. I'm here. Then her phone chimed in response. We can be together again. Something about the message made her feel uneasy. Its words felt like a vague threat. She would have been scared, but the oxy was making her brave. However, bravery and foolishness are often two sides of the same coin. The dark road didn't reveal any signs of Tammy, just rain and wet asphalt. She looked down at her phone to type another message. Where are you? Once again, the reply was almost instant, but as she looked at the screen, she was filled with dread. Turn around. She spun around to find Tammy sitting in the back seat, her once vibrant eyes now hollowed and lifeless. Emily's voice was caught in her throat as she tried to speak, but no words would come out. Tammy lifted her hand and pointed forward. A sudden bright light caused Emily to turn her attention back to the road. She had gotten distracted for a brief moment and she had drifted to the wrong side of the road and now a large truck was barreling towards her. Emily made a sharp correction and just barely managed to avoid the oncoming vehicle. However, the turn was a bit too drastic, the road too wet. Tammy's broken neck flopped to the other side as the car began to hydroplane. The last thing Emily heard before slamming into the tree at 60 miles per hour was one final response from her deceased friend. Now we have the E. Scrolling through her favorite forms was providing her little entertainment tonight. Normally with enough time, she could find a rabbit hole to journey down on the internet, but tonight was coming up barren. Everything she found online was stuff she had read about a dozen times. The Sherman Ranch and the Missing 411 seemed to be popular threads on her favorite form, but she wasn't interested in taking those paths again. Echo needed something new. Her legal name wasn't Echo but it felt like her real name. Everyone online called her Echo, and she would sometimes accidentally refer to herself by her online personality. The lines between the digital world and the real one grew thinner each passing night. Soon, she'd have to start signing her rental lease with the name X Echo X. Just as she was getting ready to call it a night, Echo noticed an unread email in her inbox. The sleepiness she was feeling moments ago disappeared replaced by the thrill of the hunt. It was from Zeta, and he tended to find the strange and unexplored areas of the internet. They met on an online forum a few years back, and would often share discoveries with each other before posting them on the forum. Echo always felt like Zeta understood what she was searching for, and that he was looking for the same thing. He was pretty much the closest thing she had to an online friend. She always assumed Zeta was a he, but they never discussed their personal lives, so they didn't actually know anything about each other. For them, it was the prospect of discovering the next online mystery that drove them each night, not friendship or connection. Opening the email revealed a short message and a hyperlink at the bottom. You gotta check this out. Found a website that uses some kind of predictive chat to let you talk to the dead. Almost like a modern day Ouija board. I'm collecting screenshots and material now to post it on the forum. It's really creepy stuff. Echo grabbed a new energy drink from the box beside her computer and downed half the can. Then she clicked on the hyperlink. 
It took her to a black page with white text. The heading for the site was Lazarus Chat, followed by a long section for terms and conditions. She scrolled down to the bottom of the page and clicked Accept. The web page redirected her to another browser window that had a timer at the bottom. It was counting down from 60 minutes. Guess they need to limit the time on the site due to traffic, Echo thought to herself. At the top of the page was a search bar with a question above it. Who do you want to speak with tonight? Figuring she would test the system, Echo typed in the name of her favorite author. Once she pressed enter, it came back with a message. Unable to reach the spirit. Well, it passed the test thus far. Her favorite author was still alive. Next, she started to type in the names of famous people who had passed away recently, and without fail, it connected her to a chat. The chat box was black with green text. It almost looked like a software system from the 80s. However, she had to admit that she was pretty impressed with the AI that was running the chat. The sessions always seemed to start with the supposed person being confused. I guess the creator wanted to give it some flavor. The responses also happened in real time and used terms that would genuinely be used by the individual. This was going to make an excellent creepypasta. However, soon she got bored talking to famous dead people and had a weird idea. Echo wanted to know if it could create dialogue for a relatively unknown person, for someone she knew personally. She typed in the name William Young her uncle who passed away recently. Typing the name felt sad and strange, like visiting a house you no longer lived in. Echo had avoided thinking about him after the funeral. She really missed having someone in the family she could talk to about her life. He never judged her weird hobbies and felt like she could just be herself around him. The chat connected to William Young, and the green text populated the screen. Where am I? I don't know, I was hoping you could tell me, responded Echo. It looks like a room, but I don't see any walls. Echo considered her next question. She really wanted to test the abilities of the AI now. What is your name? It's Will. Who are you? The answer sent a shiver down her spine. Her uncle did call himself Will, not William, but it's not like that's a huge leap to make. She assumed most Williams went by Will. She pushed away the uneasy feeling and focused on the chat. Everyone calls me Echo 84. Funny, my niece loved the Greek myth about Echo. She dropped her energy drink on the floor after reading the response, the contents draining into the carpet. However, she could not pull her attention away from the screen. Instead, she kept reading the green text over and over again. The message danced in her mind like a wild raven let loose from its cage. Uncle Will used to read Greek mythology to her when her family would visit him for the holidays. He was an English professor who loved storytelling. It was how Echo got into creepypasta in the first place. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she came to the realization she was avoiding about the Lazarus chat. It was not an AI creating the dialogue. But she could not accept this at face value. It was simply not possible. She had to ask a question that only her uncle would know, something that can't be found on a social media post. She wiped away the tears clouding her vision and began to type her question. What did you get your niece for her last birthday? Why do you want to know about my niece? It's important, Will. What did you get your niece for her last birthday? It was a book of short, scary stories. She likes that kind of stuff. It was Uncle Will that she was talking to on the Lazarus chat. This wasn't some creepy pet project of a college student. It really allowed you to talk to the dead. Uncle Will, I miss you so much. I never got to say goodbye to you. Carrie, is that you? As soon as she read the green text, the chat box closed. A message replaced the box that read, Connection Lost. She typed in the name over and over again, but kept coming back with an error message. Unable to reach the spirit. Finally, she slapped her keyboard off the desk, sending it flying towards the wall. Then she heard it. It was faint, but it was the sound of whispers coming from the hall. The rage and frustration drained away, being slowly replaced by cold, palpable terror. Sitting up from her desk, she listened at the door of her bedroom. 
It was coming from the hall, but she could not summon the courage to look beyond the barrier. Echo locked her door and went back to the computer. She had to warn Zeta that it was real, that they had meddled with forces they didn't understand. She attempted to send a direct message to him, but he appeared offline. She shot over an email and waited for a response, but still she sat at her computer without a word from Zeta. Then a dark, terrifying thought crept into Echo's mind that couldn't be ignored. She went back to the Lazarus chat and typed in the name Zeta. A black chat box appeared and green text filled the screen. What the hell is happening? Echo covered her mouth and fought back the urge to sob. She instead focused on the chat. Outside her bedroom, the whispers grew louder with each passing moment. It was now a chant of voices speaking in unrecognizable hymns. Zeta, it's Echo. What happened to you? Echo, the chat is real. I think something bad happened to me, but I can't remember now. How is that possible? You were fine an hour ago. When the timer runs out, I think they come for you. Once you breach the other side, you can't go back. Echo had completely forgotten about the timer. Looking down at the digital display on the browser revealed she only had a couple of minutes left. The chat closed and displayed the message, connection lost. Echo returned to the homepage of the Lazarus chat and scanned through the terms and conditions, looking for a way to escape this nightmare. Then she read a sentence that stripped the last fragile shred of hope she had left. Using the Lazarus chat will result in harm, up to and including psychological distress, reality-altering experiences, and ultra-hazardous events that will cause death. The devil really was in the details. The timer at the bottom of the browser window now took over the screen, counting down the last 30 seconds she had left. Echo threw her computer out the apartment window in a desperate attempt to prevent whatever was about to happen. The voices in the hall now called her name. A thunderous knock banged on the bedroom door as Echo sat in the corner, waiting for the end. Ghastly here. I hope you enjoyed those stories and got your healthy dose of Halloween terror. If Halloween's your favorite holiday, give this video a like. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing for more spine-tingling stories. I want to wish you a happy Halloween, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.